What's good, YouTube? It's your boy B Nudges back with another reaction video, guys. Let's go. In this video, oh, we got a fish. Ooh, baby. I'll be spending 24 hours on this boat. Oh. We almost lost our second course. <laughs> Only eating what I catch. This very recently was swimming through these waters. Cheers. Bon appetit. Hey. Right now, we are in Minnesota. This land is famous for having 10,000 lakes. Right now, we're on one of them. Fishing on lakes in Minnesota is far different than fishing on the ocean. For example, fishing in the ocean is exciting. There's lots of fish, fish that could kill you. <laughs> Here, I don't know, maybe a fish could give you a small bite. The typical fish you can expect to find here in Minnesota are the sunny, the crappie, the northern, the walleye, the largemouth bass, and sometimes even a muskie. The biggest challenge today is that I'm actually not a good fisherman. Luckily, I've employed the help of a couple of friends. Person one, Greg. You might remember Greg as a person who shot an innocent Cape buffalo in Africa. Wait. There we Ooh. go. Down. Yeah, down. What if those buffalo are filming a food travel show over there and they're gonna eat you? Oh, is that? That's possible. <laughs> I think they eat grass. Today, he's gonna do the same to some fish. Greg also has offspring. Meet James, young, vicious, deadly with a fishing pole. Why am I talking so intensely this whole time? <laughs> Let's get started. Right now, we're headed from a bigger lake to a smaller lake through a narrow passageway. This is where definitely the fish are. Def probably. Boom, right here I'm with James. What do you think the chances are of us today catching enough fish to eat for the whole day? Is that a room? What are you going for right now? Uh, bass okay. and northern. And what tastes better? Northern. What do you make out of a northern? Food. Nice. Right here I'm with Greg. Greg has been fishing his whole life. He loves fishing, he loves Minnesota, and he loves cooking. Is there a question in there? Not really, but <laughs> that's all true. So I know you've caught a lot of fish, but have you ever caught the fish and cooked the fish on the boat? Not on the boat. I've eaten it on shore before, because that's normal, but it'll be cool. Boom, we got a fish. Net. Net. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Finally, victory. What you got there, James? Got a giant sunfish. The bluegill sunfish, also known Ooh. as the sunny, is one of the most common fish you'll find at the end of your fishing line in Minnesota. Well, we're picking up steam. We've got another sunny right here. Add into the collection. They're the perfect fish for newbie anglers. Nice sunfish coming in. Oh, oh baby, that's a fish taco. <laughs> you proud of that? They can be transformed into a delicious meal. I'm just happy that I can contribute instead of James catching all the fish. <laughs> Well, these guys are fishing. I want to show you guys some exotic foods from Minnesota. I've traveled all around the world eating the different exotic foods various countries have to offer. I've had porcupine bile in Vietnam. I had buffalo placenta Ooh. in Thailand. I've had goat pit juice soup in the Philippines. But here's the thing. There aren't just exotic foods in other countries. We have our own weird stuff right here in Minnesota. I have three examples right in front of me. First of all, Bayview salt and vinegar pickled eggs. These guys learned how to pickle and then they went crazy with it. Let's open this up. No. It's really vinegar. I've got my egg here. It's more dense than a normal hard-boiled egg. My wife is wincing just at the smell that's traveling to her. Let's try it out. Super sour, dense, chalky, dry yolk. This is good food for like a bomb shelter because I think mm -hmm. it would last a long time. It's pretty out there. So that's just eggs. But here we have turkey gizzards. Maybe you didn't know this, but most birds don't have a stomach. Instead, they have a gizzard, which helps to grind the food as they eat it. Ready to eat? No. Yo, gizzard is sweet. Never needs refrigeration. That part concerns me. Oh. <laughs> it's a cloudy brine. This is like when you go into a science lab and you see animals or fetuses that have been suspended in a liquid. It's basically this right here. Okay, I'm gonna reach my thingies in here. All right, that's a respectable big old piece of gizzard. Let's try it out. Mm. It's tastes good, very nice. always. It's quite soft, very sour, very pickly. Eh, it's not bad. Finally, we have this right here. Pork hocks, cured, cooked, and boneless. <laughs> Oh, there's like little fat particles floating up. The folks there. Is this raw pork? They're at Bayview. Or raw beef. You do not cheat you when it comes to these strange meats. Take a look at that. Let's try it out. Hmm. I kind of don't hate that. Can I get some of that pork hock? I absolutely really like that. It's not that bad. <laughs> Take a look at this. My wife is just simply wincing right now at the notion of this. Meaty, tender, oddly sour, but I like it. That's a good drinking food. We've got another fish right here. Pike. 
Oh. It's a new brand of fish. The northern pike is a prevalent fish species wow. throughout the land of 10,000 lakes. Check this guy out. Very nice. Its name is derived from its similarity to the pole-shaped weapon known as a pike. These guys can get up to nearly two feet long. But Whoa. around here, many folks don't like northerns and they go underappreciated. I say it's because they don't know how to cook them up properly. Greg, what food should this be made into? I think we should grill that one. Now that we've got a couple fish, we can get to cooking. What's really cool about this boat is that it has a barbecue built into it. But first, we need to put up the canopy in order to see it. Wait. <laughs> Keep waiting. All right, come with me. Let's check out the grill right here. Take a look at this beauty, everything you need. And you probably can't do a brisket in here, but you could definitely do some burgers. And today, we're going to do a northern. Step one, take five seconds to scrape the grill. Whatever remains on the grill, that's called flavoring. Hit it with some of that Target brand charcoal. This is charcoal for idiots. It's already got gas or something in there. Make it fire up real quick. Yeah. If you want to do things the fast American way, get some charcoal lighter. Really get her wet. Then you simply light her up. Ooh. Oh, okay, I got it. Got it. I thought it might blow. <laughs> we're gonna wait for this to burn. What's I expect there to? Down, we're gonna clean up that fish and put our first meal of the day right here on this grill, right? You betcha. Right here we have Greg getting his hands dirty, doing some filleting and some cleaning. Greg, what do people like or dislike about Northerns? Generally, what they don't like is they're very slimy and they're very bony. Part of the reason why this one's going on the grill was because it's easier to pick the bones out. If you were to bread it, it's a little harder to eat, but nice white fillets. Now today is not just about the fish. Luckily, these guys also caught a couple ears of corn right here. We're gonna grill that up too. We want the corn to steam over the grill, so I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of water, wrap it back up, and throw it on the grill. Greg, what is the hardest part about grilling fish? The hardest part about grilling fish like this without having a hard surface is that they can fall apart. And then you put some seasoning on. Right now we're using garlic salt and some fresh cracked pepper. All right, folks, it's pretty much cooked through, but this is the tough part right here. Can we get it off without destroying it? Oh yeah, it's very firm actually. Oh, look at those grill lines. Boom. We have our first meal of the day right here. And I got to say, this very recently was swimming through these waters. And now it's on a plate. It looks fantastic. Let's try it out. Cheers. Bon appetit. Hey. Mm. Mm. That's super legit. It's got a pretty good chew. Yeah, it's flaky, but not just falling apart. Not mushy. Definitely, you can taste the minerality of the freshwater fish. But mix that flavor, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic salt. It's really nice. Oh, and there's corn, too. That was just to make the plate look nice to me. I mean, that looks good, but... The corn doesn't look like that's ready to me. I don't know. To be honest. As far as sunnies go, is this about as big as they get? They will get a little bit bigger than this, but this is a very good sized sunfish. You can get a good fillet off of it. Small, crunchy, crispy. Makes awesome with tartar sauce, yeah. awesome fish tacos, and they're really fun to catch. So if you're bringing kids out and things like that, this is something that's easy to target and they taste awesome. Right now we have those sunnies. Those sunnies have been cut into tiny fillets and these are perfect for fish tacos. These are gonna be fried. Now frying on a boat is no easy task because every time we move or the boat sways or if somebody tries to drive by us and creates a wake, we're gonna get hot oil everywhere so it's a little bit dangerous but you know what F it let's do it anyways no fire hazards here <laughs> plus we have a fire extinguisher right there what I like to do is if you have your fish and your egg wash and your breading my secret to all of it is to season the eggs with garlic salt that way it's evenly coated across all of the pieces of fish then you have to whip the eggs I like to take all the fish and throw them in the egg wash that way my fingers don't get full of goo and pour out the remainder so we just have coated fish and mix them around and then put them in the oil Nice. Oh God, look at our oil levels. It's a little bit high we on this put side. Too much oil in, probably. Let me explain something. Here's what happens when you mix water and hot oil. Sure. But <laughs> as long as you're careful, it'll be okay. Probably. I mean, I'm not recommending you do it though. After just a few minutes, these are complete. Look at that, crispy, fried, and delicious. Wow, those are absolutely perfect for fish tacos. Gotta give it up to Greg right here for cooking some amazing food today. Thank you. On a boat. For me, I put some coleslaw on a plate. We're gonna make tacos in a second, but first, let's just go straight, sunny, fried, panko-crusted deliciousness. Throw it back. 
you hear the crunch? I can oh. hear the crunch in my ears from inside my body. This is mm -hmm. crazy boat food. Little garlicky, salty, delicious. Time to make a fish taco. Here's how it starts. Tortilla. You don't need that much fish, actually. I would suggest maybe like this. That's really all you need. Next, we put on some nice coleslaw. Now, this is going to add some nice refreshingness to it. From here, spicy mayo. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That's been in the sun all day. Mm, Looks good. Sunny mayo. Mm-hmm. Finally, we're going to finish it off with a little bit of cilantro. Let's go for it. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. Shut up. I'm good. Crunchy coleslaw, just enough fish flavor, the spicy mayo bringing in some kick, and fresh cilantro on the end. It's incredible. We're eating like kings, and the best part is all this was free. Except for the coleslaw you bought. Yeah, and I did buy a bunch of ingredients, actually. Oh, <laughs> also, um, James got all the fish, and he cost a lot of money. Yeah, he's your kid. You have to take care of the kid. And the kid, he eats like an ox. Yeah, I do. <laughs> This taco cost $10,000. It's legitimately amazing. Great, well done, my man. Thanks, man. We have one more meal to go. I said we're gonna do all three courses on the boat in one go. We gotta catch some more fish and we gotta cook some more food. Let's do it. We got another one. I got one. Oh, geez, James actually has a big one. Oh, oh look at this. That looks awesome. That's so big. Probably about two pounds. So right here we have a largemouth bass. This is undoubtedly our best catch of the day. The largemouth bass is a highly prized sport fish, known for putting up a good fight. Hang on, get my fish in there too. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> what should we cook so tiny. We should pan sear that one. Oh, another one. That a kid, James? And just Yo. so you know, we didn't show James trying the last food because he ate all the pickled eggs. He's not even hungry. It's like his fishing fuel. It's bizarre. James, how are those pickled eggs? They're good. Nice. You're weird. You don't like them. Bass is part of the sunfish. <laughs> family they taste super similar if you catch them out of cooler water they're gonna taste better less fishy and deeper water fish taste better too once they get bigger than this they can start to have a little bit more of a fishy taste some people like it some people don't but this one is perfect size right here we have the bass meat Ooh, look at that big fillets caught by that kid right over there <laughs> He looks distraught for some reason. Okay, we're gonna put four different things on it. We're gonna start with garlic salt. That's our only salt that we're putting on, so we're gonna put it fairly heavy. And we're gonna put a little cayenne pepper, a little bit of heat, garlic powder. That's gonna give us our crispy outside. Then we put on some cracked pepper. Pat it in, and then do the same thing to the other side. Right here we have our bass searing in some oil. We're also gonna have a side for this dish. And for this, I thought, how about some mashed potatoes that I made last night? Oh, look at that crust. The fish looks so good already. Are complete. Time to put some mash on there. Just like putting frosting on a wedding cake. It's got it. Ooh. Just like a rhino taking a dump. There we go. And honestly, at the beginning of today, I thought for sure today would be a lot more miserable. And it's going pretty good. This looks amazing. We have a side of potatoes. We have two raw Brussels sprouts, only meant for decoration. And we have our fish. Oh, this looks really good. Nice little crust on the outside. Let's try it out. Mmm. Mm. Flaky, crispy, crunchy, juicy, buttery, salty, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All you want. Adjective in there. Mm. Let's try one more bite. It's still really firm. Mm. The cayenne's nice. It's got a little bit of heat. It's a little crunchy, a little garlicky. And it turns that flaky, light meat into something decadent when you add all that butter to it. Yeah, well done, man. Thanks, dude. Boom! That is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know there were so many haters in the beginning of the video that said, there's no way you're going to get a bunch of fish and just eat fish for the whole day on the boat. And like, how'd you get those tortillas? And so on. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, we did it. And I couldn't have done it without the Schultz family. James, he caught all those fish. Greg, he cooked all the fish. And I, you know, just did a lazy, mediocre job of explaining what was happening. No, you ate all those fish. I ate all those he fish. He ate all those fish. I want to give a big shout out to Greg here. You can find him on, oh, what, is there social media or a link? Yeah, it's... We're keeping all this. Okay, how about yeah. this? I want to give a shout out to Greg here. He is a realtor. He sold me a house and he could sell you a house too if you are in Minnesota. Go check out his link for his realty downstairs in the description. Also, you can check out our new merch. Check this out. It says food is food peace. Food is peace. Check out the back. Yo, that's dope. Oh, you're disheveled. 100% of the proceeds go to a charity that helps me buy this boat. <laughs> <laughs> Wife says don't put that joke in. Okay. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Peace. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Join the Being Nudges family, guys. And I'm signing out.